Hey, beautiful creatives. Welcome to Life by Design, the podcast. Thanks for joining me, your host, Nikki Tragos. I'm an artist, letterer, instructor, and creative business owner. I started and built Life by Design from home while raising a family and learning how to juggle it all. This podcast is my way of pulling back the curtain and inviting you to step into my home studio so we can get candid about all things art, business, and life so I can help you create a life that you design. One of my favorite things to do to help me get warmed up and a little relaxed before I start working on a painting or design is to paint watercolor leaves. There's just something about the simple flow of the brush strokes, the beautiful colors that come through on the page, and something that I can do with a one pass in a very meditative state as I start to practice and begin my watercolor painting. Watercolor painting can be an enjoyable and relaxing process when you learn key techniques and some of my favorite tips. So for episode seven, I've decided to share with you my best watercolor tips. I hope they encourage you to try watercolor painting in a modern, loose, no pressure style, of course. If you've been painting along with me in class, but haven't picked up a brush in a while, maybe this episode will be the one to give you the little nudge to get you started again. Okay, so watercolor painting can be intimidating. Let's get that straight. It is a hard medium to work with. It is unforgiving. It does have a mind of its own, but it's also kind of magical how it dries with beautiful variations in movement. It has a such transparency, but is really interesting. It's a medium that's really lovely to work with when you know how to manipulate it. Watercolor, a very traditional medium, that with lots of time and practice can yield some beautiful pieces of artwork that's both impressive and detailed or even loose and modern, perhaps simple and minimal, depending on how you use it. My personal style is definitely more free-flowing, modern, expressive, and again, goes against the grain. Surprise, surprise. (laughs) I like open space and negative space and simple lines. I don't like to work in detail, and what I do is just allow the watercolor pigment to move as it needs and to dry to reveal an interesting and simple finish. I certainly love single stroke stems and leaves where my brush and paint can work their magic on their own without much manipulating. I love blooms and washes of wet on wet, where again, I just observe the paint, let it move and flow as it does naturally. If these terms are unfamiliar to you, not to worry. They're just a few simple things that I teach in my big modern watercolor for beginners class and will help shed some light on here in this episode to help you along if you're a beginner and are just starting to explore this beautiful medium. Hopefully you've listened to last week's episode and enjoyed hearing all about the art tools and supplies that I can't live without. If not, go ahead and listen to the episode to get the gist of all that I recommend to help you get started building your art supply toolkit. Now, let's say you have your supplies, maybe you've taken a class or two, or maybe just watched one of my YouTube videos or binge watched them all. Whatever you've done, and maybe you're looking for some more of my essential tips. Well, I've got you. Let's dive into some of my favorite watercolor tips to help you love what you're painting and to inspire you to paint some more. So first off, and really importantly, actually, these this will be two tips in one. I want you to paint what you love and paint in colors that make you happy. So not necessarily watercolor specific, but these tips are important ones that I think you need to hear first. Okay, again, paint imagery of what you love and use colors that make you happy. Easier said than done? Not really. Let me explain. I personally love leaves and houseplants and greenery and being in nature, specifically the forest. So I paint leaves and stems over and over again like it's nobody's business. The more I paint them, the better I get, the more relaxed I feel, and the more I can focus on my brush technique, controlling the brush and learning how to move the paint to create the perfect leaf or stem of leaves. I couldn't do that painting dogs as much as I love dogs. I don't want to sit and paint a dog as much as I want to sit and paint a stem of leaves. I have dried stems and leaves all around me. I pick up fallen branches on my walks. I have collections of leaves in bowls on my desk, even acorn. While I'm out for a walk, I basically pick up things that speak to me. I look at their shapes and colors. I take photos of them 
I paint them in my style, but I study them and I paint them because I love them. And when I paint these leaves and stems, I don't always use a traditional green. Well, sometimes I do. I pull out my sap green and use that because it's what I tend to gravitate towards. But Payne's gray, Payne's gray is a color that I typically grab and there is nothing more satisfying than watching that inkiness of Payne's gray and the brush strokes that land on white watercolor paper, just creating pages and pages of stems and leaves and creating flow and depth. Anyway, that's one of my favorite colors. So if you haven't written that down, Payne's gray. So don't feel confined to painting motifs in their traditional form. Experiment with the color, the simplicity of the form, and do it so that it speaks to you. Do it as a warm up, just as long as you're constantly putting your brush to paper and painting what you love in colors that you love. It'll all come together, I promise. So I use a color that speaks to me, even if it's non-traditional to what I'm painting. It's a color again that I love as I paint the motif that I love. When you focus on painting what you love and colors that speak to you, it also helps you find the joy in the process and will make you want to practice more, okay? So think about what do you really love? What do you want to paint more of? Or even what do you want to study so that you can paint more of that? So that's a huge tip. Ready for tip number two? Okay, so the only way that you will get really good at watercolors is actually two things again. I'm like a two tip pro here. <laughs> I want you to get some instruction. This is huge and I'll get back, back to that in a second, but I want you to practice. Practice your water to pigment ratio is the first thing I want you to work on. I can describe to you what that water or pigment ratio should be, I can make you YouTube videos and add lessons to watercolor classes that I offer. I can give you enough visuals to help you really understand what that ratio should be. But the only way that you'll truly understand that ratio and have it work for you is to practice. Simple, right? I feel like just the idea of practice is underrated. Anytime you want to master or really dive into a topic, you need to practice, right? So I tend to use more water to paint, but again, that's just my style and is something I realized only after lots and lots of practice. I mix a different paint to water ratio for when I need my paint to be bold, or if I want the motifs to really stand out, or if I'm needing to scan and digitize my paintings. I mix a lighter wash if I want the paint to be loose, and maybe I'm working on some modern bouquets, then I don't need the, the paint to be as bold or as opaque. And the only way that I know about these differences and how I paint with watercolor is by practice, trial and error, and more practice. Okay, you're going to get tired of hearing me say that. Okay, so again, practice is key and learning how to mix a more opaque watercolor petal. So your mixture should be liquidy, not very watery. Practice mixing a more transparent mix. And here is where it can be very watery and runny and use different colors when you're experimenting with your puddle. Because pigments are often milled differently, some colors will react differently to the ratios that you may be used to for a color that you have used often. I know whenever I bring home a new brand of paint, whether it's watercolor, or acrylics, or whatever, I take that paint and I test it out. I use it as undiluted as possible so I can observe its true hue. I add a little bit of water. I may play around with a drier brush, a wetter brush. I play, I have fun, I practice, I make color, colorful marks on paper, and I just, I get to know that pigment and how it re reacts and responds so I know how to use it better, okay? So let's move on to the next tip, which is get some instruction. I feel like these two go hand in hand big time. Whether you're watching YouTube tutorials or taking an online class or reading a book, Learning about watercolor paints, your brushes, the paper and techniques like dry versus wet, how to work light to dark, or how to build depth. Understanding these techniques will do one major thing for you. Well, two. One, understanding these techniques will help you understand how watercolor paint moves, reacts, and behaves so you can control it easier. And number two, when you can control your paint and your brush, the magic happens where you'll be able to begin to see how easy it is to paint with watercolor. You will enjoy your painting more. You will be inspired to paint more. And hopefully going back to the last tip, you will practice more. Okay. So to recap, when you are just starting out 
I recommend to get some type of instruction. I still refer to watercolor books that I bought years ago. I still take art classes online with a variety of teachers who have a plethora of styles. More on that in a different episode, but make sure that you are getting some type of instruction, okay? Next up on my tip list is to let your colors and strokes mix and mingle. Don't be shy. <laughs> Allow your colors to flow and bleed into one another. It can make for really interesting effects when you're painting with watercolors. Working wet on wet as you mix colors and letting them just touch slightly is really an easy way to understand movement and how colors react to one another. But also you can see how easily you can paint depth. So don't be shy. Mix your colors and let them mingle together. Oh, while you're at it, get comfortable with taking a dry brush and lifting the paint off of your stroke. This happens when you lay down a brush stroke and it's still wet and you want to create some highlight. You can take a dry brush and allow the bristles to just soak up some of the excess paint. And number six, I would say is my last big tip for you, is to add your darkest color at the very end and practice lifting color to create instant highlights. Watercolor is amazing when you know how to work with it. You'll be surprised at how easy you can control that paint and your brush strokes and enjoy the beautiful process. So there you have it, my top tips to help you get painting, practicing, and enjoying what you're creating. If you're curious about learning more about watercolor and my modern approach, you can check out my beginner class at lifeidesign.com. I will be welcoming new students in the month of November and um, hope you're open to joining me. So thank you again for tuning in this week. If any of these tips have helped you, I want to hear about it. Send me an email, a direct message, comment, review the podcast and let me know, or um, let me know what you thought about this episode. Before I let you go, if you are enjoying this little podcast of mine, I want you to share it with a friend. My goal with these episodes are to give you a little nudge into the creative path that makes you happy, that brings you joy. So I feel like it's something we all need more doses of. Let's share it with a friend. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you in the next episode. Stay creative. It creates an instant highlight and again, helps you build the confidence in controlling the paint versus having the paint control you. Okay, so the last tip that I would say is really important to know about watercolor painting is that you always want to leave your darkest strokes until the very end. Okay, remember my tip about watercolor techniques and working light to dark? You'll be tempted at first to add in the dark, but save that to the end. Use a pencil if you want to lightly sketch in where you need to add darker detail, and that will help you resist the temptation of adding the darkest strokes. Always work lightest to darkest when you're working with watercolor, okay? Building that depth and building the layers is key for creating any kind of um, really opaque, beautiful interest in your watercolor pieces. So that's it. Those are my best watercolor tips if you are a beginner to modern watercolors. So if you played around a bit and need some troubleshooting, here they are. I'm going to list them out for you. So tip number one was to paint what you love. Okay, paint what you love. And tip number two, if we break it down, is to use colors that make you happy. I know I delivered those two tips together, but one, paint what you love. Two, use colors that make you happy. Three would be practice. So understand your water to paint ratio for the style of painting you're working on. Understand how to change that pressure of your brush. Work on practicing those things. Four, would be save your time and frustration by getting some type of instruction. Of course, I'm going to recommend my Intro to Modern Watercolor class, but get your instruction wherever you can. I'll link my YouTube video classes for you to our tutorial so that you can have a look. Number five, let your colors mix and mingle, play around. Be bold with mixing colors together and just really observing how they react when they're next to each other.